It's the worst of the CBC for August 4th, 2021, the show where I watch the CBC so you don't have to. What's the point? What's the point of even watching today? Now, I can't decide if the CBC is better or worse during the Olympics because they really don't cover anything. They do some Olympic coverage, which I guess they have the rights to, so they're doing it because they can show it. So Andre DeGrasse won gold in the men's 200 meter. Congratulations, Andre. Um, high five from the country. Uh, and other than that, like, it was just press conference of Ontario, you know, and, and good on it. It was like they showed Stephen Lachey or whatever saying, you know, we're not going to force anyone to get vaccines. We're not going to force vaccines on the kids. And uh, so that was good. And then, you know, everyone asking questions like, but why? 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 Why are you allowing people to have a modicum of civil liberties? This is unacceptable. And then he'd have to justify because like, you know, Daniel is right and you can't force people to uh, disclose private medical information as a precondition for participation in the domestic economy. Didn't say that, but he basically said that. So I was happy kind of watching that, but then it went on and on and on and then just bored me. So that was another 40 minutes of my life that just lost into the vortex of nothingness. Uh, so let's let's do... Then I finally got... To, after two hours in, I finally got to a story that I deem news. It's the one-year anniversary of the explosion in the building in Beirut, which was likely a stockpile of illegal arms by Hezbollah in Lebanon, as they do kind of control the Lebanese government. And by they, I mean Iran. By Iran, I mean Hezbollah. And by Hezbollah, I mean the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, I'm going to make the thumbnail for this video, um, the picture of the protests in Lebanon today, where it's actually saying Iran out. This is why I like Lebanon. And I like the Lebanese guy that brought in. So, I, I, don't, I don't know what the Rosemary Barton scale gets, but for my man, I think it was Nadim Hamoud, the Lebanese immigrant or Canadian guy they interviewed last year and then brought on this year to come to Canada. This, this is, okay, this is the people we want to talk to in terms of immigration and the Middle East. The people. Not the proxies for the Iranian government, the Muslim Brotherhood, or Jamaat-e Islami, or wh whoever else, or not some paid expert uh, who has who has a who has a PhD in simping for Iran. No, I want to hear from my boy Nadine, right? Because he said, "What? Okay, there's two facts facets to sort of like good immigration here, and Canada nails like we'll say the left side perfectly, all right." We have had almost no problems with Lebanese immigrants. Uh, Lebanese immigrants tend to be like the third most wealthy they're definitely in the top five of like you know wealth accrued of you get a significant brain gain so part of the immigration game is like you want a uh, brain gain you want the best and brightest coming to your countries and all the innovations and technologies and high you know high skill labor being produced in your country and the, the smarter and the more talented people you have the better it is so the way canada gets a brain gain from lebanon is lebanon has a pretty you know solidly built up population let's say it's not a hell whole third world thing although Hezbollah and Iran are trying their hardest to make it so it's not so when you do what Canada did in the great peacekeeping mission and you endear yourself to the Lebanese people and you do as my boy Nadim said is provide a, a country where there's more safety and stability to raise kids the smart people in Lebanon the people who have you know external value who can create things and then bring values to other people they take that ability they leave Lebanon and they come to Canada that's good and because Canada's so crazy they probably then leave Canada to go to America but for the moment, right? That's good. You want all, all the parts of sort of the the, the left-wing facets of enabling immigration, we do. And Lebanon's a great example of this. Lebanon's a perfect example of this, actually, because, right, very little problem with the Lebanese people uh, coming in, integrated greatly. We have a good relationships, peacekeeping thing, and we say, okay, here, we're selling you a place of stability where your creative and hard uh, exploits and hard work can, can flourish, right? All of that's good. Now, there's the other part of it, we can call it the right-hand side, where you need a balance of both, where we need to then say, okay, we are doing this favor for the Lebanese people, or we're, we're being kind to the people of Lebanon, the people who can immigrate. Now, we have to also acknowledge, what are they leaving from, right? People are, when they're running away from Canada, they're running away from something. Who are they running away from? Hezbollah. Read Iran. Now, this is what Canada does horribly. We get a 10 out of 10 on the left-hand side and a 0 out of 10 on the right-hand side, which is causing some problems. We have an extreme tolerance for Iranian shenanigans in Canada. Flight 752 was shot down intentionally. The government still can't say that out loud. They call it an unfortunate accident. You know, I broke the, I did the story on that years ago as the first one to sort of call that one. Now, you have my boy Nadim, 
who is saying the problem is the government, right? The problem is Hezbollah or Iran. Because when you let Hezbollah or Iran do whatever they want, they will stockpile weapons. So if they get to the point in your country, read Lebanon, where they have enough control of the government, where they can get away with everything. So they keep stockpiling arms in, in downtown Lebanon, and then kaboom, it explodes, killing many people and causing billions of dollars worth of damage to the country. Hezbollah bad. Now, is Hezbollah in Canada going to stockpile enough munici munitions in, you know, the friggin' TD building or some Bay Street thing or some condo down by the water to, to cause massive damage? No. But they will get away with what they're allowed to get away with. And a couple of years ago, we had a story where we saw Hezbollah operatives at Pearson Airport sort of planning attacks. So it's very reasonable to assume that Hezbollah will do what they always do and push the boundaries to see what they can get away with, right? They'll, they'll try and push for more and more influence in whatever country they go into. They'll stockpile weapons, right? And usually in, in conjunction with organized crime. Like you saw this with the Danforth shooting, right? The connections between what seems to be a, a terrorist attack and, and organized crime and a bunch of other things. You know, Hezbollah tends to get involved in this type of thing, especially in South America, where they're totally involved in, in, in narco-terrorism. Right, so enabling the people who drove Nadim out of Lebanon to come make homes here in Canada isn't going to help anyone, right? You need to say, okay, there's a bad situation here, like the Syrian refugees. Okay, Syrian refugees. Who are the refugees and who are they refuging from? Who are they running away from? We need to have both of these conversations. We only have one side of these conversations, so that's why it gets so ridiculous. And so... That's where we are in Canada. That was the only story covered in the CBC today. Those are my two cents on, you know, I was happy to see Nadim say Canada is a better place. You know, there's problems in Lebanon. We need to fix it. People are rebelling against the government there. Read Iran. But the problem is the CBC, every other day of the week, they simp for Iran. So that concludes this video. And for some reason, Siri turned on, so she might give some commentary on this video. Go. No, she didn't. All right, I will see you all tomorrow.